What's going on guys, assalamu alaikum, welcome to Amigos Code. In this video, I wanna show you how to properly structure your backend applications. So usually I get a lot of questions on how to properly structure the application, what packages should I create, what classes, and basically I just wanna give you an example of how you should do things. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, give me a thumbs up so I can keep recording these videos, also, if you're not part of the Amigos Code community, go ahead and join over 30,000 people combined. So, literally, smash that like button so I can keep on recording these videos. Literally, it means a lot when you smash that like button. So, without further ado, let's kick off this video. So, right here, I'm inside of IntelliJ. And right here, I wanna give you uh, an example with a Java project, right? So, more, more specifically, with a Maven project, but you'll see that you can take this exact same approach and then apply it to, for example, a Node application or a Python application because you know the, 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 there will be some similarities of what I'm about to show you. So in here, I've got IntelliJ open and let me quickly walk you through this project right here, which is a Maven project, and this should be really straightforward. So with any Maven project, you actually have your source right here and then within you have main and then Java and then resource and then you have test, right? So the idea is that your Java code should live inside of this folder and then resource, this should be, for example, any uh, configuration files that you might have or basically if you're building a full stack application, for example, with Spring Boot, then this is where all the HTML, CSS and all of that stuff goes into, including JavaScript files, right? So, and then here you actually have the Java. So here, so basically test and in Java, this is where you put all of your test code, right? So again, uh, I love testing and I always encourage my students to test their code because it will just guarantee that whatever code you write and you deploy to real users indeed does work. If you want to learn more about testing, go ahead and check my website where I've got a full course just on testing. So in here, what I want to show you is, um, you know, a couple of things, a couple of things that you should really be creating for structuring the application, right? So what folders should you have and what goes into what? So let's start with, for example, let's say that you're building an application and this application has, for example, customer, it has orders, you need to send emails, so on and so forth, right? So the first thing that you need is a package. So here I'm going to create a package. And package really is just a folder, right? So uh, in other languages, they just call it folders, but in Java, it's called a package. So the same with, uh, you know, for example, Golang is just a folder that you create. And then within the package itself, you can basically uh, structure and organize your code, right? So packages is what you need in order to organize your code. So in here, let's go ahead and have a package called com dot amigos code so usually the root folder or the root package in java so this is mainly in java should start with your with your or with your organization domain so here com and then for example your name or your company name right so here let me just press enter and in here uh, with java you always have for example a main class right so this is the main class and let me just say main in here and this is where the application runs, yeah? Now, I've said, maybe we have users, we want to have orders, we want to have uh, emails, right? So what should you do? Well, you can take, for example, users, and from here, you know that, uh, or actually customer, for example, and a customer, it's an entity, right? So instead of you having all of the classes bundled up into the root package, you can basically have a package for each entity. So for example, here, I will have a package for, so a package within the main package, I'm gonna have a package for customer right here. And then let's just focus on customer now, right? So usually you might have a class called customer. So this is the customer model, right? So this is the bean, right? So this is the, the POJO itself. And then Usually you might have also a class right here that performs um, business logic. So you might call it customer and then service. You might also have another package that maybe it's for configuration, right? So customer and then config, 
right here. You might also have another package for the HTTP layer, right? So this is where the HTTP requests come in. So here I can say customer and then controller. There we go. And finally, you also might have a class for interacting with the database. So here I can say uh, customer and then DAO for DAO. And basically, uh, in fact, let me change this to an interface. So usually this is an interface because you can have multiple implementations and the same goes for the service. So usually you'll see people saying customer service and then they'll have a customer service impl for implementation, right? So here, let's just stick with customer service, but you can see how, so you can see how this is emerging, right? So how basically I went from the model customer and from it, I actually have a bunch of classes in here and, and now I can start writing my code. Now, you might be, you know, saying why, why do I need to, for example, say here a customer config or customer controller or customer DAO if I'm inside of the customer package? Well, if you have a massive, massive project, then you're going to be searching for these classes, right? You're going to be searching for these classes and searching is, 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 is one feature that every IDE has, and usually they are really powerful, right? So if you have all the classes uh, named config inside of their respective package, then you're going to have like a bunch of classes which are the same, and then it's just difficult for you to search. So this is why you, you basically name it. So the model plus whether it's a config, controller, DAO, or layer. Yeah. So this is the general idea, to be honest. Then basically, so here, let's also say that, for example, you have another package and here I'm going to say order. So here order. So this is one model, right? So order. So from here, you can see that basically it's the same thing, right? So you, you most likely will have the same, uh, the same things inside, right? So a config controller DAO service. So I'm not going to copy that, but I just want you to see uh, the overall structure here, right? Now, Let's also think maybe you want to have um, email functionality, right? So you're going to send emails. So here, package, and then email, right? So then inside, let's just say that we have a class, and here it's going to be called the email and then sender. And this guy here, so this guy here usually is an interface, right? And I've got a typo there, so this should be email and then sender. So email and then sender right here. And it's an interface. And this is because you can have different types of email senders, right? Maybe you're using Twilio. So here we can have maybe, so let's have a class and then we're going to say Twilio and then email. I think it's not, not Twilio. I think it's send grid. Yeah. So send uh, grid and then service, for example, right? And this guy here implements the email sender right? Uh, so basically you say implements and then email and then sender just like that. So you can see how my code is actually emerging, right? So I didn't write any actual code, but I've got the structure in place. So also in here, let's say that, uh, basically you can get the gist, right? So you can take your models and then create packages from it. Now, the benefit of doing this way is that, if your application becomes so huge, if the application becomes so huge, right? So let's say that now you have like 50 packages, right? And you can see that this is now a monolithic application, right? And usually what you want to do is you want to basically have self-contained applications that just do one thing. And this is where microservices come into play. Now here, what you would do is you'd basically uh, see that, okay, so now I've got one package for customer, one package for email, one for order, so on and so forth. And to be honest, you know, the package itself can be its own microservice. So now you can start pulling things out into their own, into their own project, right? So usually uh, in Java, maybe you want to have a multi-module Maven project structure, right? So each of these, for example, if you're using Spring Boot, for example, then there'll be their own Spring Boot application. But you can see that now I can take 
each individual package and from it, I can build its own microservice. So hopefully you can start to see the power of, you know, structuring the applications this way. So one other thing that you might have, for example, is so here, let's have a package and maybe you have um, some shared code, right? So this is the shared code where each of these, uh, you know, main packages or so customer email and order, they maybe depend on. You also might have one for uh, DB or actually that could have been outside or maybe inside of shared, right? So you could have a DB package inside of the of shared. So here, let me just leave it outside. And one thing you need to realize is usually uh, your team will come up with, you know, the standard of how you want to basically structure the applications. But usually this is a good starting point. So DB and there we go. And to be honest, you can see that this is pretty much like how you would, you know, structure your application. Now, uh, just a couple of things here. So this is the code itself, right? So this is where, you know, the meat and the bulk is. And then obviously inside of resources, for example, you might have migrations, um, so on and so forth, right? But this is the overall idea of how to structure the application. Now, let me just give you a couple of other folders I might have within your application, right? So here, outside of source, I might have, so I might have a directory. So this time is not a folder. Uh, it, so this time is not a package, but it's a directory. So a directory and a package, they are, they are the exact same thing, to be honest. So here, um, so this folder, maybe you want to have one for docs, right? So this is where you put, you know, you know, some documentation inside, right? And usually you can have basically, um, you know, folders within folders and then pay, and then basically just organize your application, right? Another folder that you might have is, so here, if I say directory, you might, ho you might have one for design, so design, and this is mainly for ADRs, so uh, architectural design records. So if your team, they want to basically solve a, a problem and then they, they came up with a solution, this is where they actually give the description of how they came with 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 the architecture or you know the the benefits and the drawbacks of why they chose this particular way of solving this problem so this is where adrs are used for right so here then inside of design i have adr so you can basically google adr um it's really powerful and people are using it quite a lot to be honest then also you might have one other folder for maybe CI, right? So CI, continuous integration. There we go. Maybe if you're using Git as well, right? So Git, uh, you might have one for, let's say, Git, I think is dot, and then Git, and then hub right here. And then basically you can have workflow, so on and so forth. But you can see like how I'm actually now structuring the application. I've got a couple of things here which are really cool. And perhaps maybe you also have one for shell scripts, right? So here you'd call it a directory and then scripts. And finally, one thing that you should always have is within your application, you should have a readme. So readme dot and then uh, MD. So this is a markdown. And inside of this file, this is usually where you contain the information on how to get started with the project and things that you want. Basically, uh, anyone that it's onboarding into this project needs to know, right? So documentation, it's something really important that you should uh, take into account, even though like developers, they hate documentation. I used to hate documentation, um, but yeah, it's one thing that, you know, it's really important because uh, you know, if you leave the company, then the next person that comes in, you're basically making it easier for that person. And uh, yeah, so you should always, you know, follow these best uh, practices uh, as much as possible. But to be honest, in a nutshell, this is how you pretty much go and basically structure your application. Now you can see here, so we have the source, main, Java, and you can see you already have like a couple of packages, classes as well no code whatsoever, but you can see that it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of taking shape. So I would say follow this as a starting guide, 
and then you know adapt to what makes sense to you and your organization uh and also so as i was saying so for java this is more or less how you go about you know structuring things but for example for golang you know it's a little bit different so they have actually a set of standards that you should also follow so in here um on this github uh, project right here so golang and then standards so project layout and i'm gonna leave this link where you can find it but here have a look they give you the um basically the, the folder that you should have for api assets build cmd configs deployments docs examples hooks init internal and basically um if i scroll down it, it tells you what each of these folders do right so for example internal it's used to contain the private application and library code so you can see that with golang it's a little bit more different but i would say like for whatever language that you are um, building something, right? So always research the project layout or how you should organize and structure for that particular language. For Python, again, you can do the same. Um, for JavaScript, Node, you can also do the same. But usually, it's kind of the same thing, but in a, in a different format, I, I would say. So to be honest, this is it. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Also comment down below and let me know what you thought about this video, right? So engage with me and uh, yeah, so it will help my channel and the YouTube algorithm um, to basically help me grow. If you're not part of the Amigos Code community, go ahead and join the community is growing uh, over 30,000 people and let me know what you wanna see next. Yeah, let me know. Um, it was it was a fun video. That's all for now. I'll catch you on the next one. Assalamualaikum.